Good evening, everybody. Uh, yes, today evening's panel of discussion, personalized nutrition and biohacking, and how that supports in improving personal health. Uh, we have a group of experts who are going to talk about personalized nutrition and biohacking. Now, to start with, one size does not fit all is very apt here. Personalized nutrition is no longer a fad. People have realized that each one of us are metabolically distinct and each of us have different requirements and goals depending on our lifestyle and habits. Studies have also proven that personalized nutrition has better success rates and sustainability rates. Now, personalized nutrition is based on genetic profiling, uh, metabolism, environmental exposure, and also personal wellness goals. Now, coming to biohacking, which is also known as human augmentation, uh, do-it-yourself biology, improving health, performance, and well-being through strategic interventions. I'd like to start off by introducing our panel members this evening. Um, first to go, Mr. Faisal Al Shava. Good evening. A performance nutritionist and founder of Believe Nutrition, a habit and behavior change app to help people lose weight and keep it off without dieting. Next, uh, good evening, Dr. Raktim. Uh, he's a physiologist and cancer researcher, founder and CEO of Esperer Nutrition. Then we have Dr. Ahmed Sharman, MD, Euroassist Egypt, uh, who are leaders of travel insurance and international medical sciences. And lastly, Dr. Arvind Kapoor, who's the MD of Axin Hybridge. Now, to start off, my first question to Mr. Faisal Al Shava, can you please elaborate on why personalized nutrition is becoming an important topic for discussion today? And where do you think it's leading to? Yeah, hi everyone, uh, pleasure to be here. So the way I look at personalized nutrition really is kind of in twofold. You have, first of all, you know, the whole personalization in terms of you know, what's relevant to your genes and DNA or otherwise known as nutrigenomics, so how food can affect your genes and how genes can affect your, the way your body responds to foods. And then you have the other personalization thing, which is kind of where I come in in my area of expertise, which is really taking into consideration a holistic view when it comes to actually dealing with someone's health and, and nutrition goals. It still baffles me when, when you know, this whole, as we talked about, this whole one-size-fits-all approach and how you have all these generic programs and, and interventions being put in place. But for me, you know, there's so many things to take into consideration when it comes to personalization. Of course, you have to take into to some, you know, the account the, a person's body type, their food preferences, lifestyle factors like uh, their, their sleep, their, their hydration, their exercise. Uh, but, you know, looking deeper into that as well, I think, you know, psychology uh, and emotional health plays such a big role in terms of, of, of personalized nutrition as well. Uh, so that's kind of where I really come in. And you have to take into consideration every, every little aspect of someone's life, right, from, from their professional, uh, you know, life and, and their daily routines to their health and body goals as well. Um, at the end of the day, we all have a different genetic makeup. We all have different body types. So you have to cater to everyone's you know, specific needs and goals. And, and essentially, that's kind of the best way to achieve results. OK, great. Thank you. Um, Dr. Kapoor, would you like to pick on the second part of the question? Where do you think personalized nutrition could be leading on to? Uh, yes, I think. Uh, uh, we talk about uh, the genetics of person, you know, that uh, when Craig Venter uh, first sequenced the human genome, we find there are differences in 
every individual based on their parentage. So people are coming with a different kind of genetic makeup and that comes also with the environment which they grew or, or, or coming from, you know, like the parentage which they have different kind of style of uh, food or different kind of environment they live in. All these contribute towards the personalized uh, what he talks about. So I think when we talk about genetics versus the uh, the food, uh, the like we, we know the deficiencies of uh, gluten or we know uh, uh, people are reactive to gluten or other things. That means there is something genetics is involved with the food. So once and people sometimes people don't know about it because they keep on suffering and we find that gluten deficiency people are normally come to know very late. And some of the protein uh, reactive, uh, also we find people are, uh, when they come to the doctors, uh, they find that uh, they have something, which is uh, food is not absorbed properly or they have a lot of issues regularly. So I think when we talk about personalized nutrition, first you have to have your baseline detection that uh, what kind of food suits you or what kind of uh, nutrition which is absorbed in your body. Then you can de define that, yes, now you can uh, define the, uh, the nutrition part of it, the health part of it, and that total, uh, you know, uh, health can be then programmed accordingly. So that is how we go about these days because science has made so much advancement in these things. People talk about not personalized nutrition, but we talk about personalized drugs, we talk about one much beyond that now. No, great. I think that's very, very insightful. I mean, would you have to say uh, something about, uh, you know, saliva testing, which is apparently getting very popular now when it comes to personalized nutrition, blood works and saliva testing? Uh, saliva testing, I don't know much about it, but uh, uh, see, saliva means you have a digestive enzymes and uh, whether whether they work very well in your uh, uh, you know see people these days gulp the food not chew the food so maybe absorption is 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 an issue in the gut and uh, then you have another problems that your uh, gut bacteria or gut uh, things are people talk about probiotics so the whole this uh, uh, the our gastric pipe People consider it as a drain pipe. Whatever they want to put in their body, they keep on eating without knowing that what impact it has. Because if anything is visible or tasteful, when they go to parties, they try to gulp everything. Because what we say always that, uh, can you put a diesel in your petrol car? You will not do that. But for your own body, you can do everything. So I think one has to be very careful that what, so it be based on, so I think it is a, we, what we talk about are cohesive things. If we know these things, then I think we, our life is much better and we enjoy better health. Absolutely. Um, Dr. Raktim, my next question to you. Um, like all of these new innovations uh, from a health perspective that have come into being, tell us something about the cons or the disadvantages of personalized nutrition and do you think there are regulatory bodies that can actually govern this today? Well, pleasure to be here. Uh, I'll, I'll, uh, thank you for the question. I think uh, I would like to say first that uh, do not get bogged down too much of uh, thinking personalized nutrition. nutrition. Nutrition is personalized from day one it has been come up. So today what we are talking about personalized nutrition is because we are, the awareness has uh, grown up uh, much worldwide. The world is so diverse in our culture, in our food habits, in our, in every, everything. So nutrition has to be personalized. Now how nutrition can be personalized, that's a question. Since we are living in an age of nutraceuticals and nutrition, so, uh, so this, this makes it relevant. Now I'll come to your uh, uh, questions because we are all talking about the pros of uh, you know uh, nutri uh, personalized nutrition. Now awareness has got a different um, intensity uh, geography wise. So how we perceive the informations, how the regulations of nutraceuticals are shaping up country to country, region to region, and the food habits that we have, we have our own likings and dislikings. With this context, when you are talking about 
personalized, personalized nutrition, so I think the awareness plays a big role. And here the catch is, so, so there is no standard care globally which can define the personalized nutrition. There are some very uh, broad line sketches are available at this juncture. So that's why sometimes it may come, some informations can reach to half as an half informations and it can uh, progress as a half informations and that, uh, you know, based on this informations, the practice of personalized nutrition can come out as a uh, bigger problem. And we have seen in, in, in a, you know, especially I work in a cancer um, space. So I see the, how the personalized nutrition can affect a cancer patient treatment. Uh, generally, nutrition has got a very, nutrient has got a strong interactions with the food, it has got a strong interactions even with the drug used in the treatment in various disease, and we are unaware. So in that context, when personalized nutrition has been implied, uh, I think there is a great chance to reduce the optimal outcome of any disease treatment, and the threat lies there. Okay, thank you so much. But do you think, um the governmental bodies need to get involved in regulating such activities? Oh, yes, that is true. And I think it is uh, many of the countries has done a great job, uh, especially the Western countries. And countries like India is nowadays, it's, it's because the source of nutrients are used, natural sources are used in India. So for that, yes, governments are coming up doing protocols. Uh, the clinical trials of nutraceuticals has been given a lot of in importance, but it is not, I don't think it's a government job to uh, improvise it. Uh, there has to be a, a bigger interest uh, at a mass level, and um, I think uh, to educate and to awareness, aver to spread the awareness, it is only the government who can do it, right from the school, different uh, corporates and other um, uh, areas, they have to come up to form uh, local bodies and support a government to implement. So sketching out the overall plan is fine. It can be done. That much talent we all have. Problem is, is that implementations. So implementation has got a bigger impact than the sketching at this juncture. Yeah, absolutely. But because I think, I personally think that there's been so much of a change from conventional nutrition to personalized nutrition today. Absolutely. So people are no longer thinking about just aping somebody like a relative or a friend who says, okay, this is something that you have to do. Say, for example, intermittent fasting, which is caught up so very much in, you know, the world today. So somebody is doing it. People don't realize the adverse effects that it could have or if it could really suit each and every body type. But, but thank you so much for answering that, Dr. Raktim. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, my next question is to Dr. Ahmed. Uh, can you talk to us a little about uh, DIY biology or biohacking and its relevance to the real world today? Well, uh, when we talk about biohacking, many of us think that biohacking, biohacking is just based on some people are putting some chips inside their bodies or magnetic part or something like that. While biohacking is, uh, can be considered that uh, has many techniques. Some of them, uh, it's not. Could we please have a change in the microphone? Doesn't seem to be working, thank you. Uh, some of these techniques could be uh, too much old, maybe ancient. Uh, but we can say that the, the biohacking is something like a human enhancement. It's a technique or hundreds of techniques of how we deal with our bodies, how we uh, think about improvement of, our, um, uh, 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 let's say, productivity. Let's say how I deal with my body. It can be start from... Uh, normal uh, action we do usually like uh, uh, inter intermittent um, fasting or maybe putting some butter in coffee or meditation. Okay. That's very old uh, techniques we was using very long time. 
So all of that is has one aim, is to help the body to protect itself, to, um, to fight uh, illness or the, the, however it is, however bad uh, effects could happen, uh, even to fight aging. Many of biohackers are going more deeply or more extremely far of that. Some of them went as we start or as many of us think to use the technology of programming and having shapes and rings, something like that inside bodies. And some of them went to generic changes to uh, um, help the body to, uh, uh, to improve or to enhance its, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, its capabilities, okay? Uh, but if we back to do-it-yourself technique, that what I myself, I believe it's the solution. It's to keep far about these extreme ideas and to find what's much better for me and can be doable and can be monitored by myself. So that's technique could be, we can use it daily. Even I'm sure that all of us have some healthy practice or some healthy activities he do. Maybe diet, the normal diet could be considered as biohacking. So we can consider that biohacking is all the activities or the, the acts we do to enhance our lifestyle, our body, to help our body to solve the conflict he met every day, to help ourselves or our bodies is to uh, fight aging uh, and uh, fight illness, fight uh, maybe loses, lose weight, all kind of these protocols, all kind of these uh, uh, um, techniques can be considered that biohacking. So biohacking is, what I would like to say, is too much wide and have been used for a very long time, but not with the concept we are talking in this time as technology biohacking or hacking the body using devices or using generic uh, uh, changes. Great. Thank you so much, Dr. Ahmed. Uh, my next question is to Faisal. Uh, would you like to talk to us uh, about personalized nutrition being more effective than conventional nutritional approaches. What is your take on that? Yeah, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, we all respond to foods differently. Um, first of all, when you look at these conventional nutritional approaches, there are certain ways that you can detect whether these approaches or diets are fads, right? And uh, a lot of them, first of all, remove a specific food group right and first of all any any approach or diet that removes a food group then you know that that's a fat diet because essentially you want to be consuming you know a well-rounded well-balanced uh, approach um, but what, why, what might work for someone might not work for someone else right if, and, and unfortunately we live in this day and age today that people listen to people. So if I'm talking to a friend or a family and I say, you know, I lost 10 kilos on this approach, that person will get really excited and go do the same and then find out that they're, they're struggling and they're not you know, losing as much uh, as, as their friend or family is. And again, you know, it, it's, it's not a one size fits all approach. Um, There's so many different factors and elements that comes into play and that's where the personalization, you know, actually comes into effect um yeah it's it's it's, it's, it's crazy to just again the, the all these generic plans out there and all these statements that are that sound so good and too good to be true then you also know that these conventional programs that just simply don't work so yeah there are just so many things to think about when you're working with someone's health um, and you really want to tailor your solution according to their needs, their goals, and lifestyle, and, and that's the best way to achieve results. Thank you so much, Faisal. Uh, Dr. Kapoor, um, our next question is to you. Uh, is it worth on focusing on personalized nutrition as a global business? And if yes, how? Well, if you see that, uh, you might have heard the uh, uh, keto diets and Atkin uh, diets. 
Absolutely, yeah. These are diets which people say that's personalized diets. You can put yourself into a particular regime of diets, you know, you eat. Very strange results came. Few people got positive, many got negative results. Because there is one person uh, told me that uh, uh, he's taking a very high fatty food and his cholesterol level is coming down. The other person have the same thing, but his cholesterol levels are going up. So it is all because uh, many people who take a lot of fats, but they are still thin, skinny, and their cholesterol, LDL, HDL ratios are very good. And few people just see that uh, uh, container only, then they get the cholesterol high. So I think it, it really give us uh, that it's not important that what kind of food. It is, it is the food which you standardize yourself. What you want to eat and then you see your health. Because now these days uh, everybody is going for medical checkups and uh, they find uh, different kind of uh, observation. Then they say, okay, shift to the, uh, to the salads, shift to the soups, don't eat it, red meat or stop eating the uh, particular food. It all depends upon that, how you put yourself in that and feel okay. Uh, so I think... Uh, like we say biohacking or we have to see your own body. But I think diets are what we call balanced diets for everybody. We say that you have a fiber, you have a carbohydrate, you have proteins, you have nutrients, you have, because body is a, as morning I told in my lecture that we have the whole uh, uh, body is a, is a bio, biochemistry, uh, you know, our uh, uh, industry. There are a lot of biochemistry is happening in our body. Whatever we eat, it goes to certain kind of degradation, and then we have byproducts, end products, which goes to the building blocks. We have amino acids, we go to the proteins. So we got everything that our, our different body functions are doing the same thing. What important is that your mindset when it triggers the endocrine system, because uh, it needs uh, a certain kind of very small quantity of certain compounds, which trigger certain reactions. And then those reactions need some kind of micronutrients to dissolve whatever you eat and go to the right perspective in your body. Right. If these functions are disruptive, if these functions are creating some issues, then you get a health issue because either you get flatulence, your food is not fully digested, your absorption is not proper because you have uh, anti-nutrient factors in your body uh, with you eat with your food. So everything is aligned only when you go into your assessment of your own uh, thing. So I think many factors we say human is a very complex itself because everything is linked to the to the to the body and body has all kind of systems you know that uh, there's nothing like we have external buttons we can push to start a reaction no the brain has a has a thinking that there is a pituitary gland which is very small which releases a lot of a lot of system it triggers a lot of uh, uh, your uh, other secretions so i think what you said is that whether you go to keto, Atkin, or any normal diet, or, or uh, any kind of salads, or vegetables, or non-meat, or meat, it all depends upon that your body can digest those and give you the right kind of, uh, you know, health and happiness. Can I just add one thing? Yeah, I please. think just to touch up on that, I think the best diet is the one that you can stick to. And unfortunately, all these conventional approaches are so, like, they're not sustainable. They limit people, they restrict people, they remove, again, certain foods from food groups, and that's what doesn't allow people to be consistent. So DIY, do it yourself, understand your body, trial and error, and whatever works for you, stick to it, and that's the best way you'll be consistent. Yeah, I mean, so rightly said, Faisal, because I think your body is extremely smart. It tells you when things are not okay. I mean, even if you do it for a fad, uh, say, for example, I've been reading a lot about uh, the bullet coffee concept, which is catching a lot of buzz in the world today. Uh, people drink that first thing in the morning. Uh, they do have equal portions of fat and coconut oil with black coffee. Supposedly, uh, one tends to lose a lot of weight, but I don't know how far that's, you know, successful. But again, it's, <laughs> it's, it's more of a trial and error method, I guess. But thank you. Uh, my next question is to Dr. Raktim. What is your final stake on personalized nutrition, Dr. Raktim, in the era of clinical nutrition? Thank you. Uh, 
well let 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 me understand uh, what i understand about clinical nutrition in a layman language the nutrition which has ability to manage diseases uh, and there is another word is wellness which is to keep the life smooth or more, more of it is a preventive aid of nutrition so when it comes to the personal nutrition and clinical nutrition i would like to say is this way uh, you know can nutrition cure a disease answer is no can nutrition manage or complement the disease uh, treatment yes can nutrition be avoided in treatment of disease answer is no so with this situation clinical nutrition has got a very close integrity with personalized nutrition because every disease even i have seen in same cancer patients who is having a gi cancer the five gi cancer patients absorptions of nutrition quantum is different disease is same stages are more or less same but same nutrient is getting less or more absorbed so as you said body is very smart so in that case personal personalized nutrition in case of clinical conditions become very very critical it is no more so called because we have a, a maybe a understanding that personal nutrition personalized nutrition and nutrition which we can take of our own it is not like that it is always a medical nutrition whenever you are taking anything in the body during any clinical conditions it comes under medical interventions so you cannot say that it is personalized nutrition is not medical nutrition it's of course medical nutrition simple example like uh, we many of us takes hypertensive uh, anti hypertensive drugs many of us are not aware the cheese is a very important source of calcium it's very good food but the patient people who are taking hypertensive drug and tens hypertensive drug the cheese can the the component of the cheese can reduce down the effect of uh, the drug by not knowing this even if i am taking a hypertensive drug my hypertension is not go down either i will end up blaming doctors or myself so personalized nutrition is very important and very very significant and critical when it comes to clinical conditions thank you so much dr raktim uh my next question to dr ahmed uh, can you please provide us with some examples of biohacking and its role in improving individual health um as i said the biohacking could be um we could, we maybe we are doing it ourselves every day maybe your normal lifestyle is kind of biohacking biohacking uh, could be start from the normal diet you do maybe the keto system could be one of the biohacking uh, uh, techniques maybe um, as i said just putting some butter on your coffee could be that the way you are trying to control or to enhance your body uh, but we have levels of um, let's say extreme ideas more than meditation more than uh, uh, doing uh, uh, intermittent uh, uh, fasting to start to go to something like supplements for example the first step to increase the the trying to make a fast change then we reach something like using the technologies like mobile applications or uh, maybe the, the uh, i watches to watch our day our life our activities uh, we can even have devices which uh, track your sleeping are you sleeping well or you have uh, um, very light sleeping or heavy sleeping uh, also there is uh, devices like uh, embody devices which in just few minutes can tell you how fats do you have how muscles do you have how water how much water and give you some advices is ready made advices until we reach the most extreme of doing having some uh, uh, smart chips 
or magnetic parts in, under the skin. Even some of the people are using it more extreme than we can think. I saw uh, um, uh, an exercise for a man, he can open the door using his hand. Just using the ship, it's already in his hand. Sorry. Uh, using the ship, the smart ship inside his hand, which is, was programmed uh, to, to manage his body and to manage the waves coming from his brain to his uh, 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 bodies, body. So he start to add more uh, uh, functions. Maybe one day he can improve it to, uh, to be like a mobile phone. So I can use a mobile phone without mobile phone or something like uh, Google Glasses. So what we see that uh, there are some examples are going extreme. And these examples, we was just talking uh, uh, before this session about how dangerous it is. And the dangerous is uh, coming through from that there is no legality, there is no control, there is no observation. It's something can be developed personally, personally everywhere and can be presented as a very success ideas and a very success devices and nobody to judge, nobody to control, nobody to uh, observe. Is it right or wrong? Maybe some small labs are doing that. And the most dangerous from my point of view is the generic biohacking. That's what I see because that's playing or trying to make changes in a very sensitive part of the human. And I hope that it could be work like do it yourself, as we all recommend a, a technique. It's just make small changes, small and personalized changes, personalized programs, not something more uh, uh, advanced or technologized or uh, uh, IT. Uh, um, IT concepts with no control or no regulations. Great. Thank you so much, Dr. Ahmad. Uh, we're very sorry. I think I've just been, uh, you know, uh, told that we're running out of time. Uh, well, if any of you audiences have any questions to pose to our panelists, please feel free to do that now. Or maybe you can grab them at any point in time and, you know, have a chat. Uh, actually, we have award ceremony, and after that, you, they can ask anybody uh, if there is any questions, if that's okay. Because we are planning to do, again, the merge of both the conferences and do uh, the award ceremony together. So there are a lot of people, and everybody can have a great ceremony. Is that okay with everybody? Yeah? Cool. So um, thank you so much. Uh, the yeah, panelists. thank you so much to all our panelists. Thank you. I think it was very, very insightful and knowledgeable. I mean, you know, thanks. Thank